so, uh, so, so that's the topic that we are going to do. Uh, uh, my name is Tathagat uh, and this conversation we are also having under the aegis of uh, the Agile Leadership Network, that uh, uh, chapter we have for Bangalore. I just want to take a minute and just talk about the Agile Leadership Network also, which was basically started in Massachusetts in 2005 as Agile Product Leadership Network. Um, and the founders include uh, Jim Highsmith, David Anderson, Mike Cohen, uh, Christopher, Christopher Avery, Todd Little, Pollyanna Pixton, Doug DiCarlo, Donna, and Lovell. And, and what Agile Leadership Network is really about is dedicated to the evolution of leaders at all levels, striving to transform teams, organizations, and enterprises by applying Agile leadership principles and values. Um, a couple of us here volunteer for the ALN Bangalore chapter, which is a completely non-commercial, community-driven uh, uh, activity, basically. Uh, and I have, uh, actually, I have uh, Prasad here, and uh, I have Gopal here as well, if they can just uh, raise their hand. Sujata is a part of that as well. What we do is basically we try to have see such conversations with the leadership and try and understand more about that. So this is one of uh, the events, and we are also happy to have uh, two of the sponsors here from, uh, from Digite and from NIIT as a part of this panel. So with that, I would like to just set the context here, because some of, sometimes we say that the large companies say that Agile, you know what, it doesn't really scale up to the rigors of my business. So I cannot really use Agile for any innova innovative processes. Whereas some people who might be used to a more lightweight or more freewheeling culture, for example, of innovation, they say, you know what, why should we even have these kind of a things there? My innovation process as it is is good enough there. So what is the real answer there? Is it to have Agile uh, as an answer, as an antidote for, as, as a, uh, uh, I won't say antidote, but at least as a panacea for uh, stimulating or catalyzing innovation? Or are there other be better methods to do that? So with this panel, uh, uh, we would like to explore some of these uh, questions there. And what I would do is I would uh, go with the, with the lady in the team here first. Uh, and I would uh, talk about Sujata, who heads Voltec India operations as the chief operations officer and delivery head. And she has been instrumental in playing the key role for transformation journey of Voltec India to become agile. She's passionately driven, uh, results-oriented, customer-centric. Uh, and she, she believes a lot in continuous improvements and operational excellence using multiple process models of excellence. So uh, Sujata, uh, uh, thanks for joining the panel and welcome to the panel. Uh, what I would like to understand from you in your business that you come from, what is your perspective of what does Agile mean to you when it comes to innovation? Okay, good evening and thanks to um, um, ASCII for really encouraging us to have this session. Thanks to all of you. Yeah, uh, coming back to Agile and innovation, before I start, I really want to say it's a false dichotomy. Okay, it's not one complementing the other, it is intertwined. And I would really say that innovation, what does it mean to me is that how I can do things differently to achieve better result in terms of really making it smart way of working for a better productivity, better quality. And also how customer sees, and especially when I work with European customer, they don't want the boring thing as, as we do all the time from a services perspective. They really see how we really improve year on year, and they tremendously want to see the improvement happening, and that too when you say you're an agile organization. So from that perspective, I see that we have to really run faster even to survive in this world. So we have to be innovative, and whether you do it with agile, without agile, Definitely, there is a way to really do a smart way of working. That's so you, all about so it. So your customers really care about what, what I could probably call as a drip feed way of innovating, which is like continuous, steady improvement happening uh, all the time. Improvement Would, with innovation, either with the process or methodology or the tools or okay. smart way of working, it could be a simple way of making your code highly robust and with limited number of code, with a code trace and optimizing it also. Okay. So that could be also an innovation. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks, uh, Sujata. We'll come back to you later with that. Let me go around the uh, panel here. Let me introduce uh, Praful here. Uh, and Praful is a senior VP and location head of Bangalore Center at SunGuard Solutions. Uh, Praful also is leading the Agile uh, Center of Excellence uh, for uh, STS. Uh, he is a strategic relationships-oriented, results-driven senior management IT uh, professional with more than 25 years of experience. Uh, in combining outstanding leadership skills and proven all-round cross-functional expertise uh, with global and multicultural organizations. So, Praful, uh, you come from a multinational, a large multinational which has interest in multiple areas, financial systems there. What is your view about how Agile 
uh, how in your world of the world, how do you look at agile? Is it catalyzing the innovation or is it taking a back seat? Uh, thank you, Tathagat. And uh, hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yeah, okay, great. Uh, agile and innovation, you know. Uh, I, uh, in fact, combining these two words itself is an act of innovation, right? I think you're creating a new meme, if I may put it that way. <laughs> so anyway, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, innovation, I think uh, uh, the way I see innovation uh, are two types, you know. Uh, okay, let me step back here. Innovation actually starts with uh, a creative idea, okay? An idea that is, of, that is new and that is valuable, but not to the person who creates that, who generates the idea, but to the onlookers. If you think the idea that I propagate is making sense and it's valuable, then it becomes creative, right? And what is innovation? It's nothing but realization of that idea. So from a product company perspective, you know, we have all these blogs and all these uh, sites where you put, start putting ideas, but the one that gets picked up is something that is of value. And then innovation actually comes when you're creating it, okay? Now when you're creating something, by definition there is something disruptive happening there, okay? So the question is, can agile process, as a process, can agile actually help you support that? I'm not very sure about that, okay? Because when you talk about uh, innovation, what do you do? You're stepping out of your comfort zone and you start thinking about a particular concept, okay? And it is basically intersectional. I mean, think about science and math combining itself and creating a new field, okay? Now, that's disruptive. So how does one actually combine uh, a, a process and wrap something that's as disruptive as that with a process? That's, I think, uh, my viewpoint on that. So we would like to know more about your perspective on how you see that as we come to... Uh, yep. as we get more into the conversation. Uh, I would now like to uh, introduce Owen Rogers uh, at, the, at the far end here. Uh, and Owen is a product lead with Pulse Energy, a leading uh, energy analytics software company for commercial uh, buildings. For the past four years, Owen has been applying lean startup concepts to deliver software as a service products to a rapidly evolving market. Uh, before Pulse Energy, Owen was a consultant with ThoughtWorks, cross -co coaching cross-functional teams in Canada, China, India, and the UK. Uh, so, Owen, my question to you is, from, from how you see in the energy, which seems like a very capital-intensive world, uh, at least to an outsider, uh, what's your view of uh, agile and innovation? Is it, a, is it uh, mixing together, or are they like, uh, uh, not really uh, talking to each other? I think of agile as being a tool, and like any tool, it can either be used to support the, uh, the application that it's being put to, or it can uh, act to undermine it. And I've seen agile being misapplied in ways that completely stifle innovation, that add way more process than is necessary um, in, order to, uh, in order to be able to allow innovation to flourish. Yet at the same time, adapting agile in a way that is contextually appropriate can really allow innovation to flourish. So it's really, it comes down to the application of the approach rather than the approach itself. I mean, Agile itself is so, so broad um, in terms of its definition that you really need to get down to specifics. From, uh, from my perspective, uh, being actively involved in a startup for the last several years, I think startups are really where innovation happens. I mean, innovation doesn't ha does happen in large companies, but um, startups live and die based on their ability to innovate. And uh, so looking at what processes and practices are used in startups and to what extent those processes and practices overlap with what is in the agile canon of um, processes and practices, I think give a pretty, sen pretty good sense of, um, uh, of the degree to which it supports or undermines innovation. So have you also seen some patterns of, for example, uh, one key thing that I learned from your uh, thought process is there is a little bit of a contextualness in that. Uh, you have to really understand uh, there's no one-size-fits-all kind of thing. And depending on the context, probably depending on the class of problem that one is looking at, some method might work, some method might work. In the startup context, people talk about lean startup a lot, and you, had a, you just talked about that as well. Do you see that is really becoming a more, if we remember the Stacy matrix kind of problems that this is solving, is that really seem to be flavor of the season right now? With, with, uh, are there results that we can talk about there? Uh, any thoughts on that? Well, I, I, 
I'm personally, I'm a, a big proponent of the lean startup method. Um, and I think that uh, it is much more tailored to for, for startups. Um, and it really uh, helps encourage innovation in a way that is not necessarily as directly supported within uh, more established agile methodologies. Okay. In fact, most of the agile methodologies say relatively little about the um, uh, about about the product ideation and design process. Mm -hmm. uh, they're more focused on the delivery side, and delivery is uh, it, it, it is is obviously less less of where innovation happens. I mean, there is, uh, as, uh, as Sujartha mentioned, innovation does happen within the delivery, but I think within the context of this discussion, we're really talking about the broader innovation around bringing new products uh, and ideas to market in order to really uh, solve significant problems. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. We'll come back to you. Uh, and let me introduce Udayan uh, sitting right next to me here. Uh, and Udyan is an agile enthusiast and has been associated with IT industry for, over, for about 35 years now. Uh, he looks, he's much younger than that, looks definitely. 35 years doesn't probably talk about that. But he looks after the technology, he's a CTO for NIIT Technologies and he looks after the Technology Innovation Center at NIIT Technologies and helps formulate the technology roadmap for the organization. Uh, he has also personally been involved in adoption of agile methods for more than 10 years. Uh, which uh, would, so I would like to actually open it up. How, what changes have you seen here? What mindset changes have you seen here in the last 10 years that you have been associated with uh, kind of spearheading or, or uh, uh, leading the teams into agile adoption? And what's your take on, does it really help innovation at the end of the day? Or is it like, is, it's, it's an end by itself? Thank you, Dathagat. But I'll probably start from a different starting point. How many of you were there in the keynote session of Mary Mary Popendik? She made very two interesting points, and yes, I'll want to bring that to your notice. She started by saying that uh, one of the biggest challenge this whole industry is facing is that uh, trying to deliver shareholder value quarter on quarter. And second thing, something he mentioned with Jeff Bezos had said, saying that uh, I'm not concerned about what uh, I'm going to do in next few months, but I'm more interested in what will happen 10 years down the line. So Agile, actually when you look at Agile, there are so many things in it that uh, some things will help innovation and something will not. But I'll take a specific part of Agile, which is the focus on trying to deliver continuous value, feature after feature, sprint after sprint, and trying to prioritize all your feature that you want to do based on how much value it will deliver. To me, it somehow, somewhat sounds similar to CEO trying to deliver uh, shareholder value quarter after quarter. And uh, if that is the focus on Agile, where uh, whatever you do, you're going to measure against how much value it will produce for that specific feature, and you'll rank all your features in that line, I wonder what happens to the long term and who's really thinking about it. And uh, second point is that if you have done OR and non-linear optimization, you will know that uh, there are uh, local optimum and there are global optimum. And Agile is about incrementally keep improving. So if you are stuck at a local optimum and you try to improve it, you would never reach to the global optima. To go to the global optima, you have to take a drastic step, move somewhere else, and then start searching for that. So in that context, I will think that if you are only concentrating on value delivered through each feature, that may not actually help innovation. Okay. So yeah, it will be interesting to listen to your views with them because what I heard you saying is that repeated application of Agile will probably make your product or your process world class and you can really improve on that. But that by itself may not qualify for the innovation at the next level probably. Um, uh, possibly that. Like if you are really going in that direction, you might uh, miss the wood for the trees. Okay. So, yeah, it will be good for us to understand from, from rest of the panel as well, do they agree with you or not. But let me move on next. Uh, let me move on to Henrik now. Uh, and uh, Henrik uh, needs no introduction. He's been author of three books. Uh, uh, half a million people have read his books. Uh, uh, he is a lean agile coach based out of Stockholm. Currently works for Spotify. 
and he likes enjoy uh, helping companies succeed with both the technical and the human side of software development. Uh, and during the past 15 years, he has been CTO of three Swedish IT companies and helped many more get started with agile and lean software development. Henrik, so the question is, we have heard a couple of views already by now. What is your position on that? You've been a CTO also, and you have seen the human side as well. Straight question, does agile kill innovation? What's your thought process? No. Would you like to qualify that? <laughs> Did you have any other questions, sir? <laughs> so, uh, so why do you think so? Would you um, like to help? The reason I don't think Agile kills innovation is because I've seen so many companies create awesome innovation using Agile methods. Mm -hmm. So if Agile killed innovation, I don't think that would have happened. Okay. But what kills innovation is bad management. What kills innovation is focus on short-term... Uh, um, Focus on things like resource utilization uh, kills innovation. Focus on things like uh, predictability, 100% predictability kills innovation. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of things that kill innovation. Agile doesn't. Um, to me, Agile, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Owen there. It's, it's, it's this, to me, it's like, it's like a car. I get into the car. I can choose to crash the car into a wall, but I don't have to. Right? Um, I can choose to use the car to get from A to B because I want to get to B. Or I can choose to use the car to explore the world and find new cool places, which would be the innovation. And whether or not I succeed, it's not the car's fault, right? It's, it's the driver deciding what, what to do with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we have, we have some more interesting thought process here. And I would like to introduce the, the last speaker uh, of the session here, uh, Sudipta or Sudhi. Uh, and Sudhi heads the consulting practice for Digitay. Uh, and he's a senior VP at Digitay. In his role, he advises customers in adoption of agile, ALM, and Kanban methods. He's passionate about transforming project teams from traditional working models to lean Kanban execution. Uh, and he has been in the industry for the last 23 years and seen uh, various areas of product development, process engineering, consulting, sales, and offshore. So Sudhi, uh, we, we heard about Henrik having a very strong opinion that no, it doesn't kill. It's all really about mismanagement. Would you like to take off from there and, and add your own perspective to that? So uh, thanks in the first. Uh, if I take our own example of what we have been able to accomplish in the last two years, uh, we were a delivery team that was doing three releases in a year, uh, 20,000 test cases, only 30% automated, uh, the remaining taking about roughly two months of calendar time to even get one test cycle completed. From that kind of a development time frame, uh, we did not use Scrum, we, we, we kind of directly went to Kanban, uh, but but obviously we, we kind of did the user story and breaking up into smaller things. And uh, from that kind of experience, we moved right now to one release into production deployment every two to three weeks. Uh, we, we built the Swift Kanban product in roughly about, we started thinking about two years back, but we, but we are in about in our 18th month of our development life cycle. And it is with the same team, with the same team size, maintaining the same, along with maintaining the earlier product life cycle that we have been able to do. Uh, so there's been a lot of innovation in terms of just opening people's mindset uh, in just making people think that, you know, testing is somebody else's baby um, and there will be a separate testing guy who will do that. But, and, and making the development team think that, that, hey, writing test cases before I jump into writing the coding itself is part of is, uh, is a valuable part of the process. To me, that itself is innovation. Just making people see and realize that itself is a big part of the win. Uh, and and I and I often say, if you have an open mind, if you're open to change, uh, you can do a lot more things. Right? As long as you are continuously in that bottleneck environment, that these are my constraints, these are my limitations, and I can only do these things. That is a handicap. So I definitely believe that at least adopt for us, adopting Kanban in the last two years uh, has helped us dramatically reduce our cycle times, uh, dramatically reduce, uh, and just being able to deliver a lot more, including a new completely product from the very same same team. Okay, I think Sudhata would like to add something. Yeah, here. I just want to take the cue from what Uday mentioned. Um, the CEO would like to really take the shareholder value up. But if you really look at it, we are pushing we as management and leadership would like to push our team to really be part of innovation and then try to really make them 
do good, better and better by through whatever they are doing. But if you look at it, the buck stops with either projects or program level. What do we do at our level to innovate? Does Agile help us in any which way on that direction? So if you really look at it, this is where the, the yes and the no part of Agile kills innovation. You know, does, you know it, it comes in here to really make whether Agile can really go beyond the execution part, even making the thinking part very loud and clear from a value-based system. I think that evolution has to happen. Otherwise, it stops with only with the execution arm. Okay. Can I answer yes, to please. that? Yeah. Actually, uh, it all boils down to what is the definition of agile? Because I have looked at it and I have not found a well understood definition which is accepted by everybody. So, we have to go back to our agile manifesto and the main thing which comes out from there is that the emphasis on working code day in and day out. So, if you say that, okay, how will management look at Agile? So, in a way, they don't apply. If the Agile manifesto and Agile methodologies were thought of to deliver working code, so in that sense, the Agile that we are using in the terms of software, it is for software development purely. You can use Agile saying that I want to be faster and do things in a better way. So, but that agile is different from what is uh, mentioned in the manifesto. But let me qualify my statement saying that uh, whether agile is uh, better for innovation compared to waterfall, I will definitely say yes. So, let me but just, so if, I, if, if you allow me, I would like to just be a devil's uh, advocate here. Uh, because I, I think it was 200 years back that Pascal said, if I had more time, I would, I would have written a shorter letter. The point I am trying to come at is that sometimes, I mean we associate innovation, the front part of that is the sexy part which is the creativity part and really the dirty, the heavy lifting part is innovation where we are trying to productize the whole thing there. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that I see is if I am going to really limit the time box in, in, uh, and, and the amount of time that I am able to do, I am not, I, is it not I am going against the basic tenets of what does it take for me to be a free thinker and really be a creative guy there. So, I would like to probably know, I think Henrik has some uh, ideas that he would like to probably rebut me with. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of fascinated by this debate about whether it's good to time box innovation or not, and I keep changing my mind. But one very concrete example of how time boxing, what's that the question by the way? Sorry. Um, at Spotify last week, we had a thing which we call Spotify Hack Week, and that's when everybody, which is like 400 developers, everybody gets to do whatever the hell they want for the whole week. They get to do what, whatever they want, work with whoever they want. Um, work in whatever way they want um, for the whole week. And there's parties and live music and stuff. And this all includes designers and product people and everybody. And then, but everybody knows that this is one week. And on Friday there's a party. And there's going to be voting and there's going to be demos and we're going to be up, you know, finding what's the coolest thing that, that came out of this. Mostly just prototypes. Um, and it was absolutely awesome. Incredible things came out that never would have came out otherwise. And I think time boxing was crucial to that. Everybody knows that the MVP is whatever we get done by Friday. So I'm not saying time box is always right, but that's one example of what it definitely what was right. So I would I would ac actually just I want to add something there, for example, and maybe I would probably go to uh, I think Praful has uh, something to add here. Yeah. So so the point Hendrik makes is uh, you know that one week of high energy, you know, thinking process. I'm just curious. Just think about that entire one week high energy partying, thinking, ideation, and you wrap an agile process around that. How do you think that would work? That's what I'm trying to say. Innovation is all about sitting and trying to find out what is the best possible solution that can either change something, okay? And this is what is called an intersectional in innovation. But the point I would perhaps agree, agile as a process. Now, what I've heard here is agile as a mindset and philosophy and things like that, okay? But when we talk about agile as a process, perhaps in one area which is called directional innovation, it might work. Now, what do I mean by directional innovation? In the product world, okay, if I'm doing a delivery or if I'm releasing a product and the, I find out that a particular customer issue is uh, the release upgrade of my enterprise scale application takes, you know, 1,000 hours, okay, and it contributes to uh, a lot of other uh, support costs for me. And then I say, can I innovate around that area to bring that down by 50%, okay? 
Now that can be still wrapped around an agile framework to be able to execute on that. Okay? But the act of thinking about how I'm going to do it might again fall outside that. One last point. The other point is innovation also has another big component. You know what that is? Failure. The risk yeah. of failure. How does agile process support that? That's a question. Okay. So, yeah, no, I was just thinking maybe Owen had actually something from a lean startup perspective. If, uh, I, I missed your cue at that time. You were actually ready to answer some question. So would you like to take uh, what Profil had actually because that whole notion of uh, like for example, if you have a velocity based on which you have done the release planning and you have a velocity and a reputation to keep, would you be, would you be taking a big bets for example in that context because you, you know that there is an element of failure, there is an element of probability of failure and if you fail then your productivity or your whatever way you are being measured in the organization is going down there. Would you be doing that or would you rather take very small bets and make sure that uh, it's lights on basically and nothing really changes, you're not rocking the boat and everything is going fine. To that extent, is Agile not impeding or coming in your way of innovating and taking big bets, what, what we associate that with? Any thoughts? Well, I, I think both types of innovation are essential. I, um, I think what Uday was talking about reminds me of um, the innovator's dilemma. He talks about um, incremental innovation versus disruptive innovation. and. Um, at least, I, I don't believe that uh, existing agile processes will get you to disruptive innovation. I think, it, I think agile is a disruptive innovation, but I don't think you can apply agile to bring about disruptive innovation within the market. I think it's fantastic for, uh, for incremental change. And I think in order to be able to get to disruptive innovation, it needs to be paired up with other things. Um, and I think lean startup mm -hmm. is much better suited to attempting to realize truly disruptive innovation within the marketplace. Okay. So I'll probably want to go and talk to Sudhi on that because just uh, taking these two points here, I think what Prafal you were alluding to was, for example, really radical uh, new innovation that we are looking at. For example, there is no notion even of a product backlog to begin with. Uh, what Steve Blank talks about the whole notion of customer development, for example, and you have to go out and do the customer discovery and understand that. You are saying that Agile to a large extent is probably putting a precondition to you that I have a, I have a backlog existing right in front of me. What if there were no backlog? What if you were creating a Twitter 1.0 from the scratch and the world has not seen what the Twitter looks like? Where are you going to get the backlog from? Is, so from that perspective, I wanted to shift that to Sudhi as well. You've been doing the product and uh, doing it. Do, do, do these ideas resonate in your kind of problem solving? Well, the challenge absolutely exists. and and uh, And any time that you are wanting to make a differentiator in the marketplace which you do not uh, which is not around and and somebody the product manager or the team believes that it is incremental it is of significant additional value uh, that problem comes in and the way we solve the problem was uh, not not like a hackathon experience like the way uh, henrik uh, said but uh, but we would designate a team of 3 4 guys and ask them to work on two three themes and they would not get in, into the rigor of the rest of the project uh, sprint tracking and the and the velocity tracking. So that way, we do let them uh, let them succeed, fail. Let them take two weeks or four weeks, and obviously, they are still uh, being tracked for what they are being able to sh at least being able to go to the product manager and show at the end of the week that you know this is the direction that I'm headed to. Does it make sense? Does it not not make sense? But, but we do take them out of the delivery rigor uh, to say, don't worry about that. You, have, you need to have something within that three-week or the four-week sprint. So that's the way we tackle that problem. Okay. So which brings you, I would like to ask to Sujata a follow-up question on that. In your uh, uh, business where you are having a lot of uh, interaction with your clients, do you, see, you, do you have the same uh, flexibility available or do you see the possibility of having similar way in which you are able to, let's say, for want of a better word, I just use swim lanes here for innovation uh, happening there. Is that the way you are able to look at that or do you think there are other uh, factors to consider? No, primarily um, there, there are two things here. I just take both the cues from both the people. <clears throat> in certain area where feature comes as top priority, within feature, the customer is not asking us to really stopping us to innovate. It could be innovating a new method, a new process, or new technology. But what they expect is that if you have to really complete that 80% of your scope and you have to really give, 
the way I've just come in from leadership and management perspective is that they all know the values, but still they fail to take the risk with the team. Can I really allow them to have 10% slack time? Or I want all the time to be built. So that's what I said, the management commitment is important for the team to really have the slack. Because when you do a retrospective, all this come up, but still be sidelined anything related to management action and make them suffer. Then they really go and work 10 hours a day. It, it's not agile. That's what I'm saying. You say something and then do something. So in the whole process, what I'm saying, customer is very happy to get the best all the time and paying the least and they're wanting to do the best. And at the same time, when we go back and say, we are trying all this stuff and we would really take some time because of this, some of the features may be lowered and we will take it in the next iteration. With their consensus, we do it. Because it, and we have to really bring in the ROI in the long term, how it's going to be better for them. One such activity, what we did in our product framework development activity is that how we can optimize the code. Instead of 100 lines, how we can really do the same logic in 30, 30 lines. Okay, it's a very tough call. And we really wanting to give that space and freedom. 7 to 10% of the slack time is given, and they all did that innovation. It was very successful. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this, this is one idea from our way of working. So I, I saw Udayan and Hendrik. Yeah, Bocic. just a quick <clears throat> a comment there. Um, I think we should really be clear about separating uh, principles from, from practices. In, in my experience, uh, uh, the, the agile uh, uh, like principles and values are, are fine, are great for innovation. Some of the practices collide with innovation. Mm -hmm. So the most innovative teams I've seen, they don't do velocity. They don't do burn downs. They don't do estimation. And if, if they get forced to do that, that kills innovation. But of course, that, that's like a management problem rather than the with problem with Agile itself. Okay. But yeah, so I would, uh, the more innovation is required, the more I would relax the constraints to use this or that practice, and, uh, and I would be giving up on predictability uh, and, and, and more embracing failure and focusing more on the principles of Agile instead of the specific practices. Yeah. I, I just want to follow, follow on with that and, uh, and touch upon what I was saying before in terms of um, startups being where innovation happens. Um, and also about Agile being a, a disruptive innovation itself. If you, if you look at the origins of Agile um, in terms of the, the founders of the different methodologies, if you look, they, they actually all came from a startup background and in many ways honed their processes within startups that they worked within. I think the, the disruptive nature of the Agile innovation is that they took practices within a startup context, formalized them, and made them palatable for enterprise customers. So really, that was, that was the, 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 the crossing, the, that was the innovation, the agile innovation, at least as far as I see it. And really, in virtue of doing that, they, uh, they made a process that allowed uh, established enterprise companies um, improve their incremental innovation process so they could they could uh, incrementally innovate faster. Um, but in virtue of that, that crossing over from a startup context into an enterprise context, they eliminated the truly disruptive uh, innovation aspects of the methodology in terms of the essence of what it is to be in a startup. So, so from your perspective, and I want to come to Odin here and really understand, I think that's a great observation the way you put it, Owen, that Agile by itself is an innovation based on a lot of lessons that people learn from the startup experiences. Uh, and it probably furthers the incremental innovation. And I think what Henrik uh, said uh, seemed to suggest that the best teams which probably do a more disruptive innovation are the ones who probably do away with some of these uh, bells and whistles of Agile really and really focus on core way of really doing a learning much faster in the daytime, uh, in, the, in, the, in the cycle really and make sure that they are able to proceed on that without really piling up a lot of assumptions, a lot of inventory in the process there. Uh, so Udin, uh, you come from a large company perspective there. Uh, from some of these lessons there which seem to hold pretty well in the small company context or a startup context, is that really working for you as well or because you had a different position on that? Yeah, actually, on the whole, about this whole Agile thing, one thing which has always been bothering me, because we seem to not have any clearly understood definition of agile, what, what Agile is. Of course, there is a manifesto which states a philosophic position, but at no point of time I can say that, okay, this is the process I am following. Am I Agile or am I not Agile? 
and there is no barometer or no measure I can say that okay, you are agile, you are not agile. Henrik made a point saying that uh, agile doesn't fail, it's a bad management which fails. Now the question is that uh, how do I know which is good management and which is bad management? So one way I can turn around and say that uh, no agile project will ever fail because uh, if the project succeeds, okay I have done agile and it succeeds. And if the project is fa has failed, that is a ma management issue. So there I have a problem saying that we do not have a, as a practitioner, a clear way of saying that, okay, this is I am following agile and I am not so following So you are not agile. comfortable with the cherry picking that if, yeah. if, if, if someone succeeds, it is because of the process and someone fails, it is because of one. So we are, we are taking a convenient approach there and I think Owen seems to have some perspective on that. Well, I, I was just going to give you a simple definition of agile. Agile equals equals good. So, uh, uh, can, can somebody in the room define chair for me? What's a chair? A chair. A, a chair. chair. What, a chair what, yeah. what is a chair? Yeah. Hmm. Something you sit on? So, this is a chair? Someone who heads a committee. Uh, heads a committee. My point is, uh, um, I don't know what a chair is. I'll recognize one when I see one. There's a lot of edge cases. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard to define even something simple as a chair. So yeah, don't bother trying to define Agile. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Prafal, would you like to uh, add something here to... Yeah. Uh, 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 see, one of the fundamental things, you know, when traditionally we were always doing waterfall and maybe a little bit of iterative development. And then we had these Agile consultants who came in and actually told us why that would work. You know, speed, shortest distance to customer, predictability, okay? These concepts were great. And uh, what they didn't tell us was how to change that mindset. Okay? Now that is something we learned the hard way. A lot of blood has flown on the floor learning that. Okay? But okay, now we have kind of uh, institutionalized that learning. Okay? Now, even in the context of SunGuard, one thing we, uh, we figured out that if we have to, I mean, there were certain mandates about certain product spaces that we wanted to focus on and whatnot. I, I won't spare, I will, I'll spare you the details, but consciously, uh, like, most of you, I think even Sujata mentioned, we realized that within the framework that existed, okay, be it waterfall, be it uh, agile or whatever it is, we could not support a product creation or ideation process. It would not work. Okay? So what did we do? We did exactly what you did. You know? We put people outside the system, mm -hmm. okay, unaccountable from the agile world, okay, not non-compliant. I mean, a process guy would constantly beat us saying these are non-compliant, okay? But the management support was these three or four people would work on something that we wanted them to work on. This was basically in the big data space, okay? Now, these people, again, what was the optimal size that we decided? We consciously decided, I mean, a typical large company would put a project manager and half a dozen bodies around the place and build a huge organization around that, then create strategy documents around that and have constant ROI reviews. We dropped all that. We said, we will create a small team, okay, and the size of the team by definition was a team that would be small or large enough to share a large size pizza, literally, okay. That's the size of a team that would actually work on this. And we actually kept them outside the purview of all this for them to actually contribute. And bottom line was, in four months, they came up with a, a, a fantastic prototype which we presented at the Hadoop World Conference in New York, you know. Okay. So that was, I think, the outcome of actually consciously pulling these people outside this framework. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I just want to go to Sudhi before we uh, go to the audience Q&A now. Uh, so we, have, we, have, we are at quarter past six actually, so last 15 minutes we'll do that. But Sudhi, I would like you to kind of… Uh, no, I just wanted to highlight that uh, the question was that does Agile kill innovation? Uh, innovation was there pre-agile, pre-waterfall in the 18th century and in the 19th century and it will continue to be in the future. So I think innovation has always been around. As long as people are open to, to trying something new and not being penalized for failure, uh, in, innovation will thrive. I think the, the, the good thing that, that agile helped is to be able to say, can I, do, uh, can I take an idea in a small scale, try, prototype it, show it, demonstrate it, and if, that, if the feedback is good, then go forward on it. I think that psyche, that openness of the management to, to try something small, take feedback, 
that psyche used to the process i think makes it a little more easier to innovate and to be able to productize it and productionize it so i just wanted to lay that context so i think agile has definitely gone ways there thanks sudhi i think we we had some good uh, thought process here and uh, as you can see the daggers are drawn i think there are strong opinions and 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 there are enough i mean these are all senior leaders who have experience and they are able to talk about data from their own perspective there so with that we would like to open it for the audience q and a and if uh, you would like to raise your hand and i think we have some volunteers helping us we have one hand here in the then later uh, so please tell us if you would like to ask to some th somebody specific or if anybody uh, you would like to answer yeah i would like to ask uh, uh, to the panel over there uh, so the point that uh, i w was wondering me after listening to this conversation is uh, maybe we were one side saying that agile in itself is all about disruptive innovation it is part of it it's not a part on the other hand we are also saying if we have to really get things innovative make those best guys out of their team or out of the agile world so is it not something that there is a disconnect in what is actually being conversed so so the i think that's yeah uh, so we did not take them they were part of the same team uh, it's it's not that they were part out of the agile system it's just that we took them out of the delivery rigor and the burn down and the velocity tracking drill that the team was otherwise being subjected to Uh, because fact is that if you the team that is focused on delivery um, as it is all of you would agree as it is the scope is generally a little higher than what they can chew on top of that there are things that keep coming in so though for, for them they would obviously choose the safest path out not try just do the same vanilla thing um, and that is the mindset that is that is the milestone to my month on month Three weeks to be sprint to sprint milestone psyche that works. So I don't think I was saying take them out of the agile system. Just take them out of this drill of delivery. Uh, but then if we, uh, if we do that, say for example, like three or four guys to who get exempted out of this delivery commitments and uh, focused on innovation, does it not uh, impact the others? You know, people Great to question. stop innovating. So. uh I'm, i'm sorry so so what we do is we don't have a fixed team that is only doing this so so i have for example um a team that is focused on i mean based on the different modules that we have uh it's a question of people want to try something uh, uh new like for example we 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 were trying to build a new hierarchy interface so it was a group of guys from different teams that went taken together so it is for that objective and once that uh, objective is met it for for the next initiative it could be a different bunch of guys it's not a permanent team by any stretch so yeah. uh i was just listening uh, the interesting conversations uh, but i have a different perspective about agile and innovation right agile by itself when you talk about manifesto it is actually creating space for innovation and the innovation existed for many many years but mostly it was actually invention right what agile is trying to do is if you want to convert your inventions to really innovation you have to really make them apply in the world and how do you apply without getting to the people without uh, 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 without welcoming others opinion so it's driving everyone towards collaboration at the mindset level right you talked about bad management if the agile is not uh, applied at the mindset you will end up doing bad management so it's it's actually a collaborative effort and a mindset effort across everyone across the organization and so definitely it can never kill innovation it can foster provided it is applied at the mindset that's my opinion okay absolutely i, I go with you because out of the four uh, you know statement given in the manifesto definitely individuals and interaction really really make this innovation happen in ajay i think without that after all the people those are going to make the difference nothing else it's not the technology so i i like the view okay i, I have a question here so uh, i have seen you know both product teams and service teams service industry teams actually uh, embracing agile right they've been they keep working on a sprint by sprint uh, basis one of the complaints i've heard is you know since the iterations are faster it's like a t20 match right you just keep having the you keep getting the balls right so uh, one of the complaints that i have heard is they don't get a chance to innovate and learn right this is a complaint that i've actually heard from from the dev teams and the qa teams 
I like to know, obviously this is a valid, obviously you can take and then convince them and all those stuff, right? That's the uh, job of a scrum master or a project manager. I would like to know what kind of model that you, any of you have experienced to foster innovation in a sprint uh, 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 or in a, in a scrum or agile model. Okay, I come from services side, so I, I would like to say, as part of the sprint goal, definitely we, based on the last retrospective, we really make one particular activity related to this kind of innovation. It could be process, method, or tool, or it could be technology. So from a typical example, we are into a product a framework development where we stated that optimization of code is a very important aspect. Maybe they just took three or four sprint to really working on it, but they did incremental every sprint with the idea, and we were doing activity within the sprint itself as one of the goal. It's not a separate team working out on this. As a team, they have been given the mandate. And the goal is given, but the direction is left to them to decide. So some of the feature or task related to 7 to 10 percent is based on this activity. Okay. So is there also a model, I think uh, Uday or uh, one of the panelists also mentioned that you also kind of take out a couple of guys to specifically concentrate on innovation. Is that also a kind of, you know, uh, experience that a lot of panelists have seen or is just one of? Uh, see, as I said, uh, you know, when we talk about consciously putting people out there and trying to do, it's what I call the intersectional innovation, which is getting into one area and trying to trigger something which is hopefully path-breaking, okay, or something that's going to add tremendous value to the company. What your, talk, your question is about how does one deal, how does one try and do innovation and learning in that process? It is possible. And that is where I, the, the directional innovation, going deeper into your area, is definitely an opportunity. You know, Just to go back to that example, what more can I do in this particular feature and functionality that I'm contributing back to the customer? Okay? Even that simple question can trigger innovative thinking when you're actually delivering pieces. It could be a user interface. It could be a piece of code. Or it could be the entire process of doing maybe an agile testing team that is actually delivering. What more can you do? If that question is delivered, I think the teams are very competent enough to actually figure out incremental innovation. There are some very concrete things that came to mind uh, in response to your question, that what you, what you can do to, to, to make space for innovation uh, from a management perspective. The number one is actually to, to, to give, give it a number. Decide how important is innovation, right? How much percent of our time, roughly, are we allowed to spend on innovation? Which means completely giving up on predictability for that time. Suppose it's 20%, right? Then, okay, then we talk to the teams and say, okay, 20% of your time is like Google, right? Do whatever you want. Now, the question is, how do we do that? Is it, you know, a few days per sprint or is it hack weeks or that's the how. But getting that time, it's like a test. Because if I go to the management and their answer is 0%, that's a statement saying innovation does not matter here. And then you can choose to find a new job or stay, that's up to you, right? That's the one thing. Second thing is look at hiring practices, right? Because there are people who are really creative and innovative. So look at what questions do you ask the people that you hire. Do you ask questions like, what, you know, what, 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 what do you play with on your free time, right? Or what kind of you know, experiments do you do or what? Yeah. So your hiring practices and making sure that there's slack in the, in the organization would be two very concrete actions. That, that they don't magically cause innovation, but they increase the likelihood. Okay. I think the lady here yeah. had a question. Yeah. So, uh, I, I heard all the discussions and, uh, uh, you know, I, I clearly don't understand uh, one thing which is we are saying agile and innovation and scrum teams working on, you know, a particular uh, delivery cannot get involved in innovation. That's out of my experience what I'm saying this is because uh, we had a goal of having at least three patents coming from our team. Okay, and initially we thought, oh, it, it cannot be possible. We can never think with the deadline what we had. But then, uh, you know, we, we came up with a small team called Innovation Team. Okay, and um, we also, uh, you know, bought in some time between the sprints where the teams actually come up, they, they ideate, you know, there's, there's just one, one hour or two hours a week which was dedicated for this. And the results were really amazing, you know. When the team is actually working on the deliverables, they also have this back in their mind that, yes, I have this idea. I'll pair it with somebody and, you know, just come out with something else. Because mm -hmm. when you're actually working on the sprint, you know, it, something might just click up, you know, and, and things can really happen. So 
and uh, you know to see the result uh, i think we had actually five patents and not three and the team had done a great job here so i think it's it's all about mindset also which you know we have to think that it's okay to have that 10% if you think the great value which the team can get in and he, we delivered also things on time because there was a lot of motivation which got added and everybody felt that yes it's not one or two guys who can innovate there's you know each one of us have equal capabilities and get paired up and then you know okay really do great things so i, I think your your experience and your experience as well were were based around uh, establishing slack within your process in order to allow innovation to happen mm -hmm. but I mean, where does innovation come from? Innovation is a byproduct of learning, learning something new. And learning something new is a process of discovery. And where does discovery come from? Discovery comes from con uh, conducting an experiment, really. And so I think that you can achieve, you can achieve innovation through uh, having a dedicated team or having certain individuals that maybe have more of their time uh, available to focus on discovery. Um, and experimentation, or you can try and make it part of your organizational culture where experimentation is just something that you do and that learning is one of the key objectives for the organization. It can be how people are, are measured, is um, what, what they've learned. Um, I, I don't know how many people came to Fred George's talk yesterday, but he was talking, he, what, the, uh, the key point in his presentation was that if the Agile that you're practicing now is the same as the Agile that you were practicing six months ago, then you're doing something wrong. And I think that that's, that's, that's a great statement because if, it is, if it's coming down to, to learning and to discovery, um, then, uh, then you know, that means that you're innovating. Yeah, uh, probably just another thing uh, that it was an open innovation, it was not limited to what we were actually working. It was not a process improvement or it was not a tool specific improvement. It was nothing to do with that. But it was the team members were free to think anything which can actually make a difference. It could be probably a business which uh, probably something which none of us would have thought which would work here, okay? And we had few patents which we had to give to our different domain because it actually fitted there, not our actual, you know, thing. Mm. But then it add, added value to the entire, you know, okay. perspective, so. Uh, so, if you realize what you guys did was you made almost the goal of making patents the project objective. And, uh, Absolutely. Right? <laughs> and, uh, so that's a little trick, but sure. then it does work. But, mm. but in most cases, uh, that would be a byproduct of the core project business goal. Um, I do, uh, uh, one of our uh, customers is, is Honeywell. Anybody from Honeywell at all, HTS? So, uh, so I have seen in their uh, office labs where they are actually tracking quarterly number of patent filings done, right? Uh, so that is an objective very clearly. But I can assure you that if a business project deliverable doesn't hit the milestone, the amount of noise and fire would be many times more than if a patent objective doesn't get met. So I think to your credit, the management gave that and focused on patent as an objective, but it's a fairly uh, rare case, it would be my humble submission. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, we are almost at the end of it, but we can have probably one or two questions okay. more. Uh, this is for Hendrik, uh, based on your one of your comments that you made saying that innovation is killed not just by agile, but Genetically modify them. <laughs> See, uh, that's, that's, that's my second question. Basically, Can I get back to you in a, in a month? <laughs> that's, that's, uh, second question is this. We all know that uh, when we are talking about Agile, it's about converting the culture in the organization right from the roots, right? And now we have the higher management who doesn't want to reroot the plants and the trees, and then they want fruits to be yielded out with innovating different things. Uh, we should start with cultural change and that starts right from the brains of everyone involved. Now, based on your experience, I just want to know some of the things as to how could we reroute this in the brains of the management. That's what I'm really thinking of last seven years. Still we are not, we are not achieved. <laughs> but one thing I want to tell you, taking a cue from here and uh, somebody said about the recruitment, how you recruit people, 
definitely from a local optimization, we have to really have a system thinking. If you really do a system thinking, definitely maybe best in us, when you really talk about lean startup, actually culturally they are there to really innovate. And I think I speak on uh, my Indian um, mindset primarily because we are all bound to listen to our elders from day one. You know, that's, that's been the pedigree, right? So definitely even if you have a nice idea, if you bring it up, the first thing is, no, shut up, do your duty, and then you finish what we have given first, then we can think about innovation. This has been there ages in our DNA. So definitely we have to eradicate and then bring in a different culture and change in the culture and mindset. Definitely go from a local uh, sub-optimization to a global system thinking. Definitely it will work. And I think we are all here to do be the change agent and the catalyst to do it. I think that's the best we could really do it to our society. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I certainly agree with your points. What I feel is like the organizations should allow teams to build products. It shouldn't be allowing teams to be catering to our deadlines. Okay, the moment you put a deadline for anything, you're you're already giving a first step for killing innovations. That is a that's what I feel. No, but if you if you <laughs> just no, so what, what I mean is just leave the teams to build a product. The team is going to anyway come up with a great ideas. way to cause innovation. I'm going to just counter you now, right? A great way to cause, uh, cause innovation is give them a really challenging deadline and a really challenging problem and say, go for it. You don't give them a solution. You give them a really tricky, interesting problem. Ideally, you give five teams that interesting, tricky problem and we give a deadline and say, let's figure out something really cool. That's okay. one approach. But that's not really what I wanted to say. I wanted to respond to the questions that I've been dodging now for the past. You know, thanks for helping me, by the way. So it's about how to change culture, right? And I have no idea. <laughs> but I've seen it happen sometimes. And I thought about, well, why did it work in this particular case? And I think when I say bad management, I don't necessarily mean bad managers. Managers typically want to do a good job. Um, but broken systems cause bad management to happen. So what you can do as an outsider, which is normally my perspective as a consultant, you have a unique advantage as an outsider. It's a fresh perspective for a little while until you're part of the system and then you're screwed. Right? But fresh perspective, you can notice, ah, these behaviors are causing bad management, which are, causing, which are killing innovation. So you can hold up the mirror. You can reveal the system to itself using tricks such as Kanban and you know, various metrics and whatever, right? Reveal the system to itself and sometimes incredible things happen and bad management becomes great management. Not always, but it can happen and it's quite cool when it does. So if I can use, um, uh, I, I was about to come to that with so if you don't mind because yeah. we, we talked about uh, time boxing so I need to time box this conversation also. Uh, we talked about uh, taking the innovative ideas out of the time box, out of the realm of predictability like a Steve Jobs kind of the, the, the super secret iPhone labs or something. I think we will have time right after that at the, at the water hole there. So I'm sure that you can use the time for that. Um, I have to do the bad job uh, of uh, time boxing it, so I hope you will pardon me for that. But I would like to give 30 seconds, I, I will take a cue from Hendrix. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give a challenging problem to the panel and a challenging time period of 30 seconds for them to wind up their position and come back and really wind up what their thoughts are so that we can wind up this uh, panel discussion there. So Udyan already has a microphone. So yeah, so let me start. Uh, actually, in India, the whole software outsourcing business started from a perspective of conformance to requirement. And we have spent maybe 15, 20 years trying to perfect that. But slowly, there's a realization among the management saying that we have outgrown that and we have to now deliver value or we have to focus on customer delight. So I think in next few years, you will see a lot of change happening in the thinking in management in terms of uh, how we deliver things and how things are going on. So even though I do said that Agile really kills management, that's not really my position. So here we have a change in position now. Okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, what I'm seeing in India is that uh, most of the top management has already realized that just conformance to re uh, requirement or just taking orders to deliver that is not going to be what will lead us to the next level. And you're going to see a lot of change in the next few years in all companies. From my perspective, I think uh, uh, Agile is not about process and I think if there's one thing that you can take away, uh, I think everybody emphasized it either directly or indirectly, it's about a mindset. Okay? So anybody who's talking about 
and when you're talking about hiring people, I would urge you to actually put them into a clean room and get them inducted into the agile process, which is about thinking, before you actually get them onboarded onto your teams. That's going to be a very, very critical thing for you to do. Okay? So, uh, agile and innovation, they can coexist, but the point is, if you take an extreme position in either way, I think it's bound to fail. Um, so, I guess you all know that I do believe that agile supports innovation, but uh, I do kind of uh, believe that the the, the pioneers of the Indian uh, sector still today uh, uh, are pretty comfortable with with the position where they are, with their 10 percent growth model, uh, quarter and quarter, whatever they're able to get. And uh, till the time that they're not going to be willing to give away the drill of filing timesheets and not get out of the mindset of getting 70 to 80 metrics project by project, month by month. Uh, I think the talk of Agile is still a little distant away. That's the way I view it. Uh, yeah, my wrap up is, yeah, Agile, does Agile kill innovation? No. Uh, does Agile cause innovation? No. <laughs> it's, it's a tool. Uh, people can use, people, people can use Agile to cause great innovation. People can use Agile to completely kill innovation. So it's, it's really up to you. Okay, so coming back to management, I think, um, you know, the statement about uh, bad management or something, if somebody were to really hear us and then throw the stone, it will be on first of this panel only. Okay, so we cannot talk bad about the b bad management. Okay, so <laughs> coming back to the, the whole thing, if we can really get the best out of every individual in an organization by whatever tool or method or you call by any name, if we can achieve that, when they really get back to their office on the next day, if they really have a renewed energy and enthusiasm and they're wanting to contribute something, then what the project manager or scrum master is telling or the management is telling, that's where we have really got the innovation out of it. You call it by any name. So Agile neither kills nor fosters innovation. If innovation is an important objective for your organization, that should be your starting point. And look at tools um, like Agile that you can uh, bring into your organization to whatever extent it facilitates that innovation and learning process. But looking at it from the other way around and saying, okay, I'm going to apply Agile so that I can innovate, that's completely backwards. So with that, uh, I would like to close the panel discussion. Thanks for our patient attendance and to the, all the, my fellow panelists. Uh, it's been a pleasure hosting you this evening there. Thanks for sharing all your views. I'm sure there will be some conversations that will follow from here to the water hole. Please use the rest of the evening for this opportunity because most of the people will be around there. Thanks a lot and wish you all the best in your journey of innovation. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Anderson.